Hello YouTube, welcome in this fine day. Today we are going to have a look at the historic brawl commander tier list that we're about to make. Um, this list is going to be quite uh, quite large. 85 commanders are going to be on here. Um, the format does have around 500 commanders, um, but we would sit here all day if I would rank all 500 of them. So if you're missing a commander, write me that down in the description. Um, and uh, yeah let's jump right into it we're starting with joyra um keep in mind that we're going from 60 to 100 cards now like permanently um and jumpstart historic horizons has not yet dropped on arena so if you see this in the future uh like my opinion might have changed on some of these commanders Anyways, Joyra, I think she's in beard here. Uh, we're talking about the classic Joyra um, play your deck style uh, that's ending, um, starting with Parox Engine and ending with uh, Aetherflux Reservoir. Um, she has fallen out of favor quite a bit, especially since people play more interaction and she can't pack too much interaction herself into her deck because she needs the critical mass of artifacts to actually pop off. Swollen B tier is going to be Riss the Redeemed. Um, Riss and uh, the other two drops Selesnya token commander, which I do think is actually better than Riss. Um, they are good, but I feel like they, they have the problem of if they get like wiped two times, they have very few catch up mechanisms. So it's kind of an all in token strategy, or at least hope that they don't have too much interaction, which the top tier decks do actually have. Um, Mono white aggro is represented by Thala here, and she's quite, she's quite an interesting spot. So basically, if non creature heavy decks are the top tier of the meta or like combo heavy decks that are really getting disrupted by this if those are the top tier decks thalia could be an a and s tier um if those are not the top decks uh then like she could go into c or b tier so i'm putting her conservative conservatively into the b tier but keep in mind if you see a lot of decks that are weak to thalia then just play her and you're probably going to win a lot of games um a card that I have a strong opinion on that is not shared by a lot of people. Baral does not belong into S tier for me. Um, maybe not even A tier. Because my personal problem when I think about a competitive deck is they have a strong win condition. And that is exactly what Baral is missing. Because you're playing counterspell after counterspell after counterspell, right? You're Early turns are amazing, right? In, in keeping the opponent from doing what they want to do. Two main reasons why I don't think Baral is that great in that regard uh, compared to other commanders like going into long game is A your mono blue so your board wipe options are really bad compared to other colors like black and white right like just wipe the board even red has better board wipes than blue um, and compared to other like control commanders Baral in of itself is not a win condition so you need to find the win condition and then it's it's just a bit inconsistent to get there. Um, as for the casual queue, Baral is probably S tier because people just scoop to him. But in a more competitive environment, I don't feel he's that great. Um, we have Boros equipments. Um, I chose to use Brune or Battlehammer here. Um, and the thing with equipments is they can have some really, really nasty starts. But those starts are um, easily disrupted and don't all, don't always come together, which is my personal problem here. So uh, yeah, C tier for Boris equipments here. Kalein Reclusive Painter. I'm specifically specifically talking about the Transmogrify Kalein version. So what you can do with this is your only creature in deck is Ulamog right and you go turn to Kalein, turn three transmogrify onto Kalein, pull out the ulamog um the weak point here is if the opponent's deck can just handle the ulamog that is really annoying you do have the backup plan of like chandras and ugins and whatnot right because your commander does kind of ramp you um but it like if the ulamog gets disrupted it is really annoying um plus point about the deck though like the versions i've built are like very heavy on discard so yeah uh, so and so 
Volo Guide to Monsters is interesting because here's the thing. In standard brawl he is an absolute menace, but in historic brawl he does not gain too much from going there. Because currently Ikoria is standard brawl legal and Ikoria makes up most of his deck, right? Like like the mutate stuff is what really gets him over the top. But other than that, he does not have too much going on for him. Um, so I'd put Volo into C tier actually. So um, yeah, not he's not as good. Certainly not as good into as in and stand brawl. Oswald Fiddlebender, we might have our first S tier on our hands right now because in 60 card he is really really consistent and I don't see him stopping being consistent at 100 cards because he only cares about the actual CMCs of cards in your hand not too much what they do. Uh, we still have plenty of uh, three drop artifacts that we can put into our deck and this guy is just really really threatening. He does have a lot of interaction against top tier commanders like Kinnan um, like he can just consistently like if he goes first Kinnan is not a viable play on turn two He just exiles him over and over and over and over by tutoring artifacts out of the deck and If he goes like first against you and you don't have too much interaction You're just getting infinite combo on turn four to five like if you do not do not have interaction He just kills you on turn five, uh, four like with infinite combos. It's just amazing um, Hazret the fervent it represents basically the monorite commanders like Karizef, um and Torburn as well. Hazred, if you see more control matchups, Hazred is probably good if you want to go into the long game. Karizef, um the two, red 2-drop, two is really good if you want to have a con really, really consistent 1-2-3 start. And Torbrand is really good if the opponent does not have a lot of interaction against you. Because if they do, Torbrand is kind of useless. But if they don't, you just drop Torber and turn 4 and kill them. And that's it. Hapatra Vizier of Poisons. Um, maybe with the addition of Yagmoth um, in the 99, Hapatra will get better, obviously. But then again, we are going to 100 cards, so she gets a bit more inconsistent. And you can look at her from like two angles. You can really go in on the minus one counter theme, but you do not have a lot of support for that anyways. But it, like, look at it more of a gruel midrangey style. But it's just not. I, I just don't feel it's there. And um, we have we have way better gruel midrange commanders. Rash me more like flash me. Um, it's uh, there are multiple versions of Rashmi, but the one I've been enjoying is a miracle grow version where you play a two drop that grows itself. Right, um, like when you when you play something in the opponent's turn, when you play a non uh, green spell, for example, when you just do anything, right, and then you just use those cheap creatures, grow them, defend them, and then your late game insurance is Rashmi. But I do feel like um, Gretchen Thetchvelo is also good commander for that. Um, she's also not. She's probably a bit better than Rashmi for the specific archetype because then you're doing something different right with rashmi you have these cheap creatures that you're dropping out turn two and then defend them uh, with gretchen it's a bit more of a longer controlly wilderness reclamation style but the, since nexus is banned there is a lot of power like missing from the deck hamza pretty fun deck um the way to build hamza is to play a lot of creatures that put counters on themselves and then have some payoffs like ancestral statue and uh, draw engine like you you basically play all the draw engines that really literally all of them soul of harvest everything like if it says you cast a creature draw a card you do it every single one and then you can just draw your like half of your deck or your entire deck in one turn suddenly and just crater of them but again early disruption is really annoying for this deck um sram Nice card. Uh, mono white again. It's a bit different. Uh, you can play either on Voltron style, but uh, if we're talking about Voltron style, I feel like there is a better commander for that. Um, and the thing is, you can also just play him like a prison style deck, but then you you're really good for in specific matchups. But other than that, you're not doing too much. Adelis the Cinderwind. She used to be in beater, but I'm currently thinking of putting her up to 
A tier, just because she's getting so much wizard support. Yes, I know going to 100 cards hurts her a lot, but again, she's getting so many good support cards that I feel like she's not missing out on too much from going to 100 cards. Um, so yeah, I, I look forward to um, uh, playing her. D tier, Joda. My personal opinion on him is, why would you play him over any other commander? That's that's the thing, right? Um, if you're trying to cheat big stuff out regularly, why not play Essica? Um, if you're just trying to cast Omniscience for cheap, uh, you need to find the Omniscience, which is really hard in the first place, and B, it's probably easier to peel it off the top with Golos, actually, um, than to just have it in hand with Joda. And Joda dies, you get no value, Essica is hard to remove, Golos uh, grabs a land, so he, at least he has some value there, but Joda kind of kind of weak on his own. Um, well, Growth of the Gravetide, um, like that's your soul tie value grindy deck, but I, I, I don't see it being there. I think it's very popular commander, but at the same time, uh, it's just a bit shaky that's it, it just doesn't line up too well against most of the other decks teferi here from uh, dominaria used to be an s tier like just blue white is always control basically defend him um i still yeah i think he's still an s tier um because he's basically baral but better in my opinion because you can still go with the extreme control early game game uh, early game game plan but at the same time your commander allows you to lean more heavily into it as well by um untapping your lands well baral makes your spells cheaper right so there's that but at the same time you actually can kill the opponent like if you ultimate teferi the game is over um and it's just it's just baral but better in my opinion kenrith <sighs> different uh, it, uh not different difficult so, um big problem here is uh if you have an infinite mana combo that's easy cheap reliable you play kenrith right that's the reason to play kenrith over most other commanders like i've seen people playing kenrith on basically anything because they don't know what to do with him i think the way to go is just playing infinite mana combos and then uh have kenrith as an infinite mana outlet but like they're really really um really not that great i used to play a deck that was pretty good back then but it hasn't gone any significant uh, hasn't gotten any significant updates uh or like upgrades from the latest sets so he's just falling down and down um Alayla, artful provocator um so the thing here is uh, we do get some affinity support and I feel like Dovin might be a good affinity commander as well She might be a good affinity commander, but she's not an artifact, which is the real big problem for affinity uh, The thing is um, Affinity is mostly blue and white and that's your baseline and she has does have those colors But at the same time I feel like she's not that great for those and if you're playing like enchantment control you could just like cut the um, cut the black and play Yorian to have more value um so yeah yeah I don't think she's the greatest uh Chilean uh Chilean Chirius is the deck that comes to mind here um a bit a bit of a shaky combo deck that um can just draw its entire deck on turn five uh and then win with Thassa's Oracle but it is very easily disrupted uh, because you need to play like what 31 drops in one deck um and then that's basically your interaction and the thing is it's getting worse because going to 100 cards basically kills the deck that's that's the thing um it just kills the deck um corvold i feel like grinding like corvold is really shooting up in the tier because we now have the infinite mana combo um basically we just need to find two creatures uh, from um modern horizons and that's chatterfang uh, well, one of them is for Modern Horizon Shatterfang, and then the other one is the Pitiless Plunderer. And the combo here is you, a Shatterfan basically makes a scroll token whenever you get a token, and Pitiless Plunderer, um, if you sacrifice a creature, which Shatterfan also can do for you, uh, you get a treasure token. So you sacrifice a squirrel, you get a treasure token, you get a squirrel token. And if you have two squirrels, um, 
the way Chatter Fang works uh, with giving you, like, being able to minus creatures. You can basically kill off two squirrels, get, get two treasures for, uh, kill two squirrels for one mana, kill off, uh, yeah, kill off uh, bo uh, both uh, squirrels in the process, get two treasures, and only spend one mana for that, and then just loop it again and again and again so you have infinite mana basically if you get those two creatures you get infinite mana with kovold play him and uh have infinite sacrifice draw your deck and just kill the opponent so i feel like with that specific combo in mind kovold is going to shoot up a lot emery is probably getting worse because she only needs one card but she has a harder find uh, uh, harder time finding that one card uh, than something like Corvold where you have all those tu creature tutors because you only have like two tutors in every for your paradox engine and if you don't find it the deck is consider considerably weaker but if you do find it Emery can just kill you on turn four if you mill it in the first <laughs> mill basically um so it's it's a toss-up really a Yara mono black sacrifice life gain has a way better commander than this now so yeah we will get that so there is the other selesnia commander amara she she's probably a bit better than uh Riss. i also i i'm not particularly sorting like i feel like modroth is better than gyro but i'm not sorting this uh, basic uh, horizontally basically it's just in any order um yeah very similar to Riss. um probably a bit better but um Still lacking some tools. Nif Mizzet Curiosity Control. It's basically is it control you try to find the curiosi curiosity, but you do not have any tutors for it in uh, is it. So 100 cards is going to make that one harder. I feel like just playing control is going to be nice again in the casual queue. Um, well, but also aggro. Like most of the decks, if you can pilot them well, if you have a strong win condition, if you can kill the opponent fast enough or just lock them out of the game fast enough, you're going to have a very good time in the casual queue. But as it stands, harder time to find curiosity equals harder time winning. Mm. Another deck that's probably like we haven't seen this guy at all uh, General Kudru for Human Tribal. But um, I feel like he's going to be there. Um, I don't know if he's in A tier, but he's he will exist because we get so much human support. So I'm I'm looking forward for that. Eluna, um, people know Eluna as either the mutate commander or the instantly find omniscience commander. Right? I think both of those ways are not the ways you want to play Eluna because mutate commander. It's usually like for like the real mutate commander is probably Volo, and he's not that great anyways because we do not. We're not getting more mutate cards, right? We always have the same mutate cards. But if you want to peel off Omniscience, off the top and Omniscience is on the bottom, the rest of your deck is exiled. So the real play, the way to play Iluna is with Tharsis Oracle. Get the Tharsis Oracle in hand, right? Now you do not have any other permanent that Iluna can grab in, in your deck. You play mutate Iluna onto something, exile your whole deck, play Oracle and win. You can mutate it on Field of the Dead. Um, which is your backup win condition basically, but you can also play emergence zone give everything a flash until enough turn and in their end step um, Play Oracle have the trigger on the stack and mutate a Luna onto the uh, Oracle and then let the trigger uh, Resolve and just win the game from that But at the same time 100 cards makes it harder the game strategy was already a meme so I feel like while mutate is probably a bit better it's not the reason to play Luna, so I'm playing putting uh, Luna into D tier uh, for the purpose of the deck that Luna represents the best, basically. Kinnan, going to hundred cards obviously hurts him, but he's still S tier, really fast, really dangerous, makes uh, seven mana on turn three quite regularly. Um, maybe a bit less now, but even so, it's really good and it does have a lot of interaction. Jeskai control on Narset. I feel like it's just uh, superior to to Ferry, so not much to, uh, to see here. Um, Nethroi, Abzan midrange with a value engine in the command zone, or just go full combo with reanimating a creature combo with a power ten or less. There are ways to do that. There are creature combos with five or four creatures that just instantly win you the game when they hit the board. Um, but you need to mill them and it's it's going to be harder so yeah off you go Nethroi. 
Um, Riel... Riel's power is that she just has a ton of draw, and the cards are pretty interchangeable, so maybe she's moving up a bit because every other deck goes down. But if Riel gets removed, it's still really annoying. Winoda, clear S tier. Um, she's still, like, in 60 cards, you had a really hard time cutting cards. Um, in 100 cards, you even had a hard time cutting cards, so, like, yeah, I, I don't see Winoda not being insane. Lyrus of the Dream Dran can be played as Urs of um, Sacrifice, but I, I think a bit of a cooler version of that is um, just Urs of Aggro with Lyrus uh, recurring stacks pieces like Thalia if they remove it, or uh, the, the um, Bounty Agent, Bounty Hunter, ba Bounty Agent, the two drop that can Vigilance, that can tap, sack itself, and then destroy Legendary Permanent. Uh, so basically just destroy their commander, which is really annoying for them. And we can just bring it back with Lyris. So yeah, just very sticky situations, but um, I don't see him being that great. Um, Blink gets a lot of support, so they're going to fill a lot of holes from going to like 60 to 100. So I, I feel like Yorian Blink is going to be up there. Sise was really disgusting the last time we had 100 cards as a like test mode basically but now it's going permanent so Sise basically only gains things because the whole combo of Sise is in one card and that's the commander right because if you get to untap with Sise have mana for a paradox engine and and that's the paradox engine that's in your deck I might add and any other card you instantly win the game so uh the combo is tap is a paradox um play paradox any other card and, and you need one mana dock on the field but that's usually what you have in this uh, deck anyway so like one mana rock doesn't even uh, matter so sis mox amber float two mana get a one drop for, use it as a ritual then again go to four mana nix lotus and then with kogla uh, thalia and uh, bontus uh uh, Montus Monument just go for infinite life drain and infinite mana and it's just really consistent and really good um, I feel like a lot of in if if people are playing a lot of interaction CC is going down but last time CC was like in in didn't match up against really good decks and like it wasn't recognized by Wizards as a really good deck so I feel like CC is just a really really strong commander Yogmoth Probably, I'm going to speculate on this one, but I think he's going to be an S tier as well. Uh, the real monoblack sacrifice commander on right now because it just destroys creature matchups. Just absolutely annihilates them. And it's really, really obnoxious uh, if he hits the board, uh, if you've ever played uh, with your uh, Yawgmoth or against him as a creature deck. And it's card draw in the command zone. It is interaction in the command zone. And it's a sacrifice outlet in the command zone, so that basically ticks all the boxes um, for me, for a really good commander, so I feel like he's going to be an S tier. Brewerwake used to be really cheesy, um, and probably the best budget deck, but going to 100 cards really hurts him. He needs to mill more cards now, and like, with Petition, it's, it's annoying. You could play the combo version, where you play the card the Maddening Cacophony, where... Um, you mill half of their deck and then you have Brewback and that card. So you mill their full deck every single time. Doesn't matter if they have 100, 1000, a million or just 10 cards in their deck. Um, but I feel like he's getting worse and worse. Any as the Gale Force um, also gets a bit hurt because you, you need a critical mass of flash creatures. Because the way you play Ineas is blue white tempo or like a mono blue tempo, right? I might add, uh, because you, like your deck is 95% blue cards uh, mostly. So what you do is like you maybe play a cheap one drop flyer, right? And from that point on, you like your two drop flyers have flash, your three drop flyers have flash. Everything has flash and counter spells. So it's basically in their end step, you either flash in something or you counter something of the uh, of their uh, one of their relevant spells. So it's more like mo like the good old school mono blue Ixalan temple or like. Yeah, or Dominaria, that was. Um, Tiny Bones. I was never really impressed with Tiny Bones. Um, 
yeah, C tier for me. Maxis, Goblins, getting huge support. The set, um, maybe even S tier, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, they're really getting support and they just play. Like if Maxis hits the board you, and doesn't get countered, you can just lose the game on the spot. So that's pretty great. Um, Mono Green Aggro here represented by Galta Primal Hunger. And I feel like Galta doesn't lose too much. Uh, we already, uh, from going to undercuts, we already have a lot of creatures that are not playing with really high power. And just threatening the play of turn 4 Galta uh, into turn 5 swing for lethal, it's just really good. Um, it's really good against like other creature matchups because you, your creatures are just huge. They're massive, right? So you're playing the basically the largest creature in the format on every single <laughs> um, slot, right? So yeah, that's just massive. So Vala um, going down to C tier. Uh, she's way too reliant on her commander. Um, you do play like it's a bit similar to Galta, but you basically play more draw engines and then you end up with infinite combos or just a huge board and crater of instantly like it's just getting inconsistent we don't have enough draw engines to make it uh consistent and then you uh, add in the fact that she needs to actually be on the board yeah not that great um marvin representing elves as a whole basically um i feel like elves are a good beat here commander uh like just commander deck uh, we have plenty of elves commanders even the ones that are not actually elves like omori can just help you power out the um your elves for cheap um just chain them together so uh, and and we get frailize as well uh, which is a really really sticky um planeswalker that just it ge just generates so much value like you can just fetch four elves out of the deck uh, turn after turn after turn after turn and that's just a lot of value in there but um yeah we will see if elves get bought up they're still pretty sad depending on what the commander they chose right like marvin has a harder time to recover than frey lies or um tybar for example um let's see mono black control with lantern I feel like that's it's just a really cool deck. Um, I don't know if the deck is getting better or worse. Uh, it's a, like some of your deck choice, uh, I mean, like deck building choices are a bit dependent on the meta. So I, I don't know. I'm a bit hesitant. Maybe B, maybe A. Um, Burgy Storm. Um, it's ba you can go Burgy Spellslinger and just burn them, or you can just go Burgy Full Storm and go into Aether Flux combos. You can go into Grape Shot combos, Underworld Breach combos. Like you basically have a build your own combo deck and just try to storm off this is theoretically the fastest deck in the format but it's inconsistent at doing so uh, like Burgi can kill you turn two with infinite combos and even turn three is really fast um but it, sometimes it struggles to even kill you on turn six so it's just inconsistent and it's not, it's not getting more consistent um, so i think it's it's actually c tier magda very similar also a uh, red combo deck because you can if you have enough treasures and dwarves uh, you fetch paradox you play a card now you untap all your dwarves you tap them again with your vehicles you get enough treasures again you get a um, ancestral statue and you bounce that to your hand and then you make infinite treasures and from that you can get terror of um terror of the peaks or aether flux and just shoot them for infinite damage but again inconsistent and this time the inconsistency is actually not from the commander itself because you do fetch for your co uh, combo but all your other good cards like your vehicles like you have very few vehicles that you like that are, you say are really good right you don't have enough two mana vehicles so you have to play three mana ones and now we have to even play four mana ones and it's it's just a pain asika still a really good commander um i'm i'm going to be perfectly honest asika was never a commander i saw as too problematic in historic pro because we do have a lot of interaction um but since we're going to 100 cards decks are getting more inconsistent i'm going to put her back to s tier again um like maybe a bit lower s tier right but essica is really good um at basically exploiting weaker decks um i think that's the best way to put it and that's also the the reason why people are fed up with her Yorn extra turns. Um, basically, you're going for a Soltai extra turns, uh, and 
from turn four onwards you have like the chance of just going into seven eight extra turns with the yorn um because what you do is you for example you tr play a turn three yorn maybe even turn two right let's just let's just assume turn three yorn turn four you untap you play a ramp spell tap out for the ramp spell. you attack with the yorn now you untap all your lands that you've also just ramped into now you have enough mana for an extra turn you play the extra turn now next turn main phase one you play your draw spells for the consistency or your like or your tutors or whatnot right and then attack with your untap and then you go emergent ultimatum or just recur the extra turn spell and you just go extra turn after extra turn after extra turn by doing that um but at the same time it's getting more inconsistent you're in if Yorn gets removed, this deck can just play Emergent Ultimatum and get get cheese out the win anyways, but yeah, getting inconsistent. Bit annoying. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Let's see. Coma with Simic Control. Full Simic Control with Coma as a win condition. I've seen this deck a couple of times. I never played it. Seemed pretty, pretty well performing. I think it's going to be a nice one. Um... Again, not too much to say about there, but every time I saw it, I was like, yeah, that's that's like a legit deck. So Rulf, uh Realm Eater is a card that I've been seen being played by pretty much only one person ever on the Brawl Discord. Shout out to Cardsar if you're seeing this. But <laughs> this deck is obnoxious. It's basically removal tribal, and he's just, just killing everything in his way. D like protecting Sarulf with discard spells and even if Sarulf is dying he still has a ton of planeswalker backups and he's just killing everything um and i feel like that's a or b tier like i i feel like he's a better hepatra for sure for the gruel archetype and uh, not gruel for the golgari like just kill stuff archetype i'm not sure if he's good enough um to be in a or b oh, let's let's just go with this Walls, Defender, we do not have... I'm, I put this in here because it's a um, popular archetype and it can just kill people. But at the same time, I feel like... Um, yeah, we... we the, the number of good walls are not increasing and we're going to 100 cards. Um, Kalia. Mardu colors are the... Like, if you're playing a reanimator deck in a historic brawl right now, you should be in at least Mardu colors. You could also play... Kenrith for the blue draw discard spells, but Mardu is your baseline. And most of your targets, we're getting more targets, more and more targets that are not angels, regular demons, but Kali allows you to have an early play. Um, being able to be sacrificed to blood for bones, for example, is an upside. It can just, it, it increases your consistency in finding good reanimation targets, um, but the deck is just, it's mediocre. Um, Kethys, Legends, solid D tier, uh, because it does not have too much support. We do have Legends, but we do not have too many Legend payoffs, and at this point, why do you play it? Right? It makes them cheaper, sure, but you can just ramp with Golos or whatnot, so like Essica, why Kethys? Kaikar, yeah, he used to be like around here, but now he's getting more and more inconsistent from going to a hundred uh, cards. So I'd say B tier. Um, but yeah, you can just get killed by a Monster four or five. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, he's just getting more inconsistent. That's the thing. Uh, also in the B tiers, uh, like. Yeah, it's Sultai, Value, ETB, Yarok, nothing more to say. S tier, Golos, you can, like, this is similar to Kenrith, people build them, like, in a lot of ways. The way I've built them is similar to the Yorn deck, where a more emergent ultimatum on its own can just instantly win you the game, which I, I just do like playing emergent ultimatum, but not a lot of historic brawl decks can utilize it to the extent of I win. And that's the only time I actually put it into my deck. So if, if a more ancient ultimatum doesn't say you win, I just don't put it into my decks basically. Um, but yeah, with Golos extra turns, you utilize extra turns um, to get them off the top. You use brainstorms, you use scheming symmetries, you need wish god talisman, cheese out all the way and just take multiple extra turns. 
Golos is just a better card than Yorn on its own, so this is why he, he deserves being up here. Ugin, ah yes, the, the CD tier uh, commander. Ugin is not a good commander for his target role because the format is too fast and too interactive for Ugin to be relevant. I could turn 4 or 5 Ugin, uh, which is like the expected speed, right? Da if it's so, like, if the opponent knows it's coming from a mile away and he knows that you basically have nothing else going on in your deck, yeah, you can just die. Like, they know the Ugin is coming, so they hold back their hastes, right? Then they kill the Ugin, you, they kill your face, and it's it's just nasty. So, yeah, he's. I don't feel like he's that great. He's really good as a card, obviously, in other decks, but as a commander on his own, nah. Cats and dogs, not too much support, nothing more to add. Slivers, obviously S tier. Um, no, uh, I do, Slivers, we haven't played with them yet. Um, I want them to be good. Um, but I feel like at maximum they're going to be B tier, maybe C tier. I'm just, I'm just putting first sliver into the midfield right now. Enchantress gets a big, big hype upgrade. Maybe in S tier, right? I don't know. Um, like I would not be surprised to see, um, and Shadowrisk being S tier, but for now, A tier, I don't know what's go uh, going to come, but yeah, big hype for sure. Chainer, I'm not even sure what people are going to build with him, probably just uh, madness stuff, but I don't, I don't feel like there's too much support here, so into C tier you go. Judith, on the other hand, is Heractus again, but with pure aggro in mind, uh, and A I like it. I, I think it's just a really strong deck. So yeah, great deck. Um, Vanifar gets uh, a lot of support in Hori uh, in Jumpstart Historic Horizons because we do get a four mana creature with ETB untapped target creature. So what you can do now with Vanifar is one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop, five drop, right? You can turn any one drop into a two, three, four, five drop of your choice. So that's a lot of flexibility. Um, the main problem Vanifar has is actually sticking, but uh, like Vanifar is a force to be reckoned with right now, um, especially after Historic Horizons drops. Orders of Sacrifice, Taza Karloff. The main problem is if you don't draw the good cards, you do not have any good cards. <laughs> Sounds simple. Uh, it It is what it is. Um, yeah, that's that's my usual problem with Taza Karloff. Uh, Gitrock Monster. Um, I mean, Gitrock still has the pseudo infinite end step discard combo, uh, like the horseman style combo. How easy is it to draw or not draw certain pieces, right? Um, yeah, let's put you into B tier. Exodus. I tried the front side of Exodus many times in like Storm or whatever, but the back side is really the meat of the. Meat on the bone, basically. Uh, what you want to do with the backside is going super low to the curve aggro, like super, super low to curve. Like I'm talking one drops, two drops, what are three drops, right? Like those. You only play like bastions and um, oh, like the devils that when creature dies, you ping them. You're not playing wall striders because where your sacrifice engine is, is in the command zone. So do not play any sacrifice engines. Maybe Yawgmoth deserves a spot, right? Maybe, because he also fulfills different roles, right? But other than that, just go one drops that when they die, make another one drop and just X is turn three, X is turn four, win. Like, or like, um, Blood Avatar, I mean. So, it, it's just really cool. Um, nice aggressive deck. I think also deserves a higher spot on here. Jadzi. If Jadzi sticks and gets to untap, you die. You just die. The extra turns, the Might's Desire Storm count, if they have a Baral to make their Jadzi triggers cost zero, you just die. You can't do anything. Else. The main enemy of Jadzi when they untap is the Jadzi player itself, because you accidentally draw so many cards that you just deck yourself. Like, 100 cards is nothing for Jadzi. They, they can churn through that in half a turn, if they get to untap, is the big thing. And 8 mana, and then untapping, and not being able to play counter spells, otherwise Jadzi is way worse and actually does the you the game. Yeah, it's getting tricky there. 
Delina. Basically, infinite combo tribal with some bullshit um, attached to it. Maybe gruel life gain. Uh, no, gruel life gain. The um, Gary life gain. Gary sacrifice. You have all those options, but it's not too great. Galaseth. Maybe it's maybe Galaseth is a tier worthy. He has some really really nice lines of play, and it is a paradox engine deck. But at the same time, it's probably the Paradox Engine deck that's least reliant on actually getting Paradox Engine. Because if you play Paradox and Galoseth and have a draw spell, you win. But if you don't draw it, you still have an extremely solid game plan of doing everything but slower, right? Some decks don't have the option, right? For example, uh, Oswald doesn't have, to, doesn't have the option of doing it but slower. Well, kind of, but... And Galoseth is not as reliant on... Um, Paradox engine while being able to play it, which is a big plus. Killian Voltron. That's, in my opinion, the best Voltron commander, even before Feather, um, because you can just protect him. Two mana versus three mana is a huge deal in the commander cost. Play discard spells to protect yourself. You play protection spells uh, to protect your stuff, right? Edif edict effects ruin your day and you just play auras on him and they get reduced by two. So that's why you, you, where your kill power comes from. Like being able to drop six power for three mana onto Killian is, is just amazing. Um, Cody, I have not seen a definitive Cody build, uh, build yet. It's um, spicy to say the least. I am not impressed by Cody, not gonna lie. Life gain decks. We do have Trellisara, we do have Heliod. I feel like Heliod is still better than Trellisara. Um, yeah, life gain decks are nice. They kill people, but um, I don't know how good they are overall. So let's put them into conservative B tier. But remember, killing people is a good strategy of winning. Demir Control with Ashiok. I feel like. Demir control is just a worse version of what other control decks tr are tr uh, trying to do. So that's why I put him into B tier. Domrian, Nark of Bolas, represents Gruul aggro in general, but also there is a sub um, type of Nicobolas decks that are just playing Blitz, basically. And that's where you uh, have like a Steen in Kiln Fiend and just kill them, right? With the Kiln Fiend. Like Kiln Fiend turn two, turn three, um, and maybe not even Bolas. No, not Bolas, the Domri, right? And then just double power, double power, double strike, kill them. So that's what you can do. And general gruel aggro with Domri is also really nice because if you go first against a cannon player, you can just have the fight spell ability on your commander. It's decent against uh, control decks because you do have the can't be countered clause on every f uh, future creature drop. So you have a few ways of building him. But I think all those ways of building it are pretty decent. Feather, in my opinion, is a worse Kellyan. Um, I, I'm still going to put them into the same tier because, um, yeah, I, I think they are. They're pretty close after all, even though one is worse than the other, in my opinion. Probably this. <laughs> I, I said before that I'm not going to rank them here, but I feel like um, five mana Nico Bolas. And this one specifically, not the 4 mana, not the 7 mana, mana, this one is the probably one of the top tier decks in the format. Because it um, has so many solutions to a lot of decks. Uh, Fires of Invention just kills people in mirror matches, uh, in, in mirror control matches. Um, Nicol Bolas is just annoying on its own because you can get into a Nicol Bolas lock against decks like Kinnon, where they can't have their kin and stick, right? And then they're in top deck modes where they need to draw a big creature, right? But let's say they are on six mana and usually their stuff costs seven mana, right? If they're on six mana, they draw land, play the land, have to exile the land because they don't have anything to exile with the Nicobolas Plus. They draw a big creature, can't play that. Nicobolas Plus is they have to exile the creature. So they're basically locked out of the game. It's the Kinnon Killer, the number one Kinnon Killer deck in the game right now. And the thing also is you just you just kill everything. And my pro tip is don't play too many counter spells because 
the strongest lines of play are like Thoughtseize, Search for Iskanta, Board Wipe, Board Wipe, Bolas. Right? Those are your strongest lines of play. So you you don't have space there for a counter spell, basically. He used to be the top of the list, especially in Transcendent Ball, but again, he's Niv Mizzet, uh, five color Niv, is a bit worse these days, basically. We have an actual Milbatten deck represented by Ashiok. Um, with the mirror, like not like um, Bruvec, but again, Mill is just going into the C tier. I have some more fringe decks here. With pirates, I'm just putting them into the list to put them into D tier because they do not have too much support. Gishath, um, yeah, similar Zakama, Gishath, pretty interchangeable. Um, I think Gishath is a bit better, but uh, yeah, not too much support there. Um, yeah, at least it kills people as opposed to pirates that's just waving around doing nothing. Again, we had um, the equipment stack earlier, so yep, going to put it here again. Casa Royal Chaser had some really cool builds last time I checked. With like playing a bunch of low cost wizards going into extra turns, going to huge value spells. Um, but again, consistency is probably going to be lower. Mm, B or C tier, I don't know. You can flame me in the comments for that. Then we have two more ramp decks with Omnath, Locus of Creation, which I do think belongs into A tier because enters the battlefield, draw a card, not a bad baseline for a 4 mana 4 4. And just the potential of generating so much mana is amazing. But the thing with Omneth is if you run out of gas and that can happen, it's really hard to get back up. Kiora has a harder time running out of gas, but is a bit more vulnerable on the board because she is a planeswalker, not a creature. And I mean this in a way where it's relevant against low curve aggro decks because those aggro decks um, are usually what are killing ramp players. Um, not too much the control player matchups, and then Kiora is easier to remove in those specific matchups. But at the same time, hmm, yeah, let's put it into B here. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like. If you have any other commander that I may or may not have forgotten on this tier list, um, yeah, tell me about it. Um, tell me your angry, uh, angry, angry comments in the comment section. Other than that, if you have any suggestions for other videos or like some commanders that you want to see for 100 cards or like updated, um, yeah, just tell me. Enjoy your day. See ya.